Recent data shows that Taiwan's tourism is on the decline. The first warning bell rang in 2017 when visitor numbers posted negative growth. The next year, as the industry continued to slump, the central government rolled out a subsidy scheme to encourage more domestic travel. Officials and industry players say that these subsidies are working to drive tourism spending. But experts warn that the subsidies are only a short-term solution. Today in our Sunday special report, we get to the heart of Taiwan's tourism woes and explore solutions for a sustainable future. Taiwan's major landmarks are jam-packed with tourists on long weekends, but on most weekdays, the venues lie deserted. Recent data has been pointing to trouble in Taiwan's tourism industry. In 2017, domestic tourism posted negative growth for the first time in five years. Domestic tourism is a major contributor to demand in the domestic economy because tourism is deeply integrated with various industries. Go on a trip and you would need food, lodging and transport. These are all things you would need to pay for. So tourism has a relatively great impact on the economy. But when stimulating domestic tourism, our goal is not to increase demand. It is also to help Taiwanese get more acquainted with their homeland. Since last February, the government has launched five programs to rescue domestic tourism in the wake of the 2018 Hualien earthquake. Some of the programs were designed to spur tourism to specific areas and others to anywhere in Taiwan. Subsidies were mainly for transport, lodging or tour group fees on weekdays. It really has helped. Before, our guests mainly came on Saturdays and Sundays. We were vacant on weekdays. Due to these tour group subsidies that are restricted to weekdays, we've gotten many more guests from tour groups on weekdays. The Tourism Bureau said it invested 3 billion NT in programs that will generate an estimated 20 billion NT in tourism-related revenue. It's planning more subsidies to prop up tourism, but scholars say direct subsidies cannot get at the heart of the problem. These subsidies are being offered regularly and they are extensive. There are subsidies for travel to nearly every location in the country. In the beginning, subsidies were an emergency rescue measure. They were offered in Hualien after the earthquake. But now we have subsidies designed to rescue the entire tourism industry from poverty. When the entire industry is poor, you need to think about why that is. What we found is that many tourist areas in Taiwan are copies of each other. We want local governments to figure out what makes their jurisdictions special. We want them to find a way to package those distinguishing traits. It shouldn't seem like all night markets in Taiwan are the same and that all old streets are the same, selling the same things and coming off as unexceptional. Cookie-cutter old streets, rainbow villages and skywalks do not encourage tourists to visit a second time. To attract repeat visitors, creativity and ingenuity must come into play. To see the Queen's Head Rock at Yeliu, everyone knows you should go during the day. But last year, Yeliu Geopark put together a light show so that visitors could view various formations at night. The Queen's Head is a thrilling sight during the day. At night, you could say it's romantic. A single creative idea was able to encourage visitors to linger a little longer at Yeliu Geopark. In 2019, Taiwan Lantern Festival in Pingdong was another unique tourism offering. Despite its remote location in southern Taiwan, this festival drew more than 10 million visitors. This festival had unique spectacles like 300 hovering drones forming the shape of Pingdong landmarks, such as the Cape Oluanbi Lighthouse. In a departure from the past, the main lantern at this festival was not the zodiac animal of the year, but Pingdong's treasured bluefin tuna. A French aquatic performance troupe called Ilotopi put on a dazzling night show right on the water. From sea to land to sky, the crowds were treated to a visual delight. For the Pingdong County government, transport had been a big headache. To get to the festival, visitors had to alight at Chaozhou Railway Station and take a 30-minute shuttle bus to the venue at Dapang Bay. 
At first, people made jokes and said we couldn't do it, saying how can Pingdong host anything? Pingdong has always been viewed as a synonym for remoteness. We kept thinking of ways to make the concept of remoteness a part of our brand. We had a very big challenge, especially in terms of transport and financing. Compared to other cities and counties, Pingdong had tougher challenges. Pingdong was able to transform Dapong Bay into a creative, light-filled wonderland. The organizers went to painstaking lanes to ensure the experience had something for everyone. There were tens of hectares of venue space. All of it was family-friendly and fully accessible. We made a point of asking people with disabilities and colleagues of all age groups to try out the venue and find issues with it. Every day, we held meetings to discuss any shortcomings. If a floorboard broke, we repaired it immediately. We held these meetings up to the end. Only after the lanterns went off and the gates closed were we able to relax. World-class artistry, local flair, and keen attention to the visit experience came together in Pingdong. In the end, the 500 million NT Lantern Festival brought in revenue of 14 billion NT. We have been in communication with local governments. We recommend against developing tourist attractions that are highly repetitive and just jump on the bandwagon. Such places generate one-off visits only. People go once and never again. In the short term at least, the central government's sightseeing subsidies are likely to continue. But local governments will have to think outside the box to guarantee the future of the tourism industry.